right? When we truly forgive, we truly, truly lean into this deep forgiveness. We can let go and heal that wound. So we stop attracting to remember, go in and ask yourself, what is the lesson here? Why did this person abandon me? How did it make me feel? What stories do I have playing around this? Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna. This is, as always, your weekly installment of your inner connection to your outer expression, where I, your host, Harrison, set the intention of nurturing the loving space needed to pull back and dive into the layers restricting health, alignment, and love. And you found yourself here early morning for me here in Australia in another solo soat another episode where it is just you and me in an intimate discussion talking about a topic that is needed is is something that is worth diving into and is something that just to be honest is something i'm really passionate about at the time that's how i usually tune into these solo sodes it's things that are moving through me at a time that i feel one not only i can talk about in depth with knowledge understanding experience but also what I feel is going to give you the most value. And today is part two of my deep and lasting forgiveness episode, where I'm going to go deep into what you can do as the beautiful listener, as you are to truly and in a long lasting style, forgive the person's places and things outside of you, but most importantly, yourself. Before I get to that, before I roll into this this understanding and this deep dive today, as always, remember that if you want to support this show, if you want to help me grow, help us grow as a tribe, you can share this episode out to some friends, some loved ones, some people that you care about very much. If you get some value out of this, you can also leave a review on Spotify and Apple podcast apple reviews by going to the bottom of the, of the podcast player where you see the show and leaving your thoughts, your feedback, your love. You can also join the Cosmic Love Antenna Facebook group now. This is a space and place where I also share more information, where you can ask questions, where you can dive deeply into other ways that you can expand and pull back those layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And then finally, if you're looking for some free self-love tools, as always, you can go to my website, harrisonmar.com forward slash learn dash more, and you can download some tools, some meditations, activations, affirmations on me. But with that, let's get into this part two episode here today. I want to give you a bit of an overhead of what is what I'm going to dive into and how this show and episode works. Firstly, I would encourage you to go back and listen to part one of this. This will give you the sort of foundation and the first section of what I'm going to go into today. I'm going into the, the last half of the spiritual laws that are connected to deep lasting forgiveness, right? These spiritual laws are really fundamental for life in general. But when you're asking, how do I forgive? How do I let go? How do I move on? These spiritual laws I found in my experience can be key, right? So go back and listen to the first 10. I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about the last nine here today. And as we're moving forward throughout these laws, these, fundamental rules of the universe, (laughs) I would ask yourself, what are the examples in your life where forgiveness is hard or where forgiveness is needed, right? Think about your relationships, your partners, your loved ones, that maybe you're moving through a divorce, maybe you're moving through separation, right? Look at the trauma and pain that's happened currently in your life or in your past, childhood trauma, ancestral trauma, look at abusive and toxic relationships with your friends and family, look at outside events and forces and ask yourself, is there any lasting suffering that continues that you need forgiveness around, right? That is where these laws, these spiritual rules that we'll be going into today are really going to help you forgive, right? And it's going to help you make this a deep and lasting forgiveness story rather than a short term superficial forgiveness conversation, right? This chat today is going to be a deep journey, 
All right, so I would encourage you as you're listening to my voice and the rules that I'll be discussing and the, how they work, don't just listen with your mind. Listen and feel with your body, with your intuition, with your senses, with your emotions, right? Because that will also give you guidance and will help you understand what these rules, how these laws are impacting you. Finally, I would also, how I would use these laws is meditate on them, right? Meditate with the question of how does this help me forgive? And then go deep into the statement itself, right? Meditate, see what bubbles up, you know, take the challenge with your partner, with your loved one, with the event, whatever the element is that you're looking to forgive, take the spiritual law and foundation that I speak about and then go deep. Okay. So with that, let's get into the show. I want to start before I jump into the first law here, I want to shout out the powerful resource that I'd recommend you read in relation to these laws. It is the book by Mr. Colin Tipping, Radical Forgiveness. I've taken these laws out of there. And what I'm doing here today is adding my perspective, my experience, and my channel on top. So that book is a powerful resource on top of this, right? So definitely check it out. I mentioned it in the first episode, I mentioned it here again. This is a powerful man. He's a lot of powerful work in the world. And if you want to go deeper on this topic from his lens, definitely check out that book. Again, I would also go back and listen to episode one, right, uh, to listen to the rest of the laws. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give a, a, a quick overview of the first 10. I'm not going to go into them. That's what the first episode's for. And then I'll go straight into the, the next laws here. So the recap of the first 10 laws are as follows. first one, and then I'm going to just read them in consecutive order. So the first one is, we have bodies that die, but have mortal souls that continue to live. Therefore, death is an illusion. The second one is, while our bodies and our senses tell us we are separate, we are all one from a single whole. Next is, in order to exponentially expand our sense of oneness, we agreed to come to this world of duality to experience the opposite, the opposite being separation. Number four is, we should forget the oneness in order to fully feel the pain of separation. Once we have felt all the pain we agreed to have in this lifetime, we use this deep form of forgiveness to remember what we are. Number six is, since pain of separation is an emotional experience, we needed a human body to feel it. Number seven is, the human experience is meant to be an emotional one, our purpose for being here. The extent in which we deny our feelings and emotions is the extent in which we deny our purpose for being. Number eight is, spiritual. we are a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human body. Number nine is vibrationally, we live in two worlds at the same time, divine, a divine spiritual one and a human experience. Once we awaken, we can live comfortably in both. And finally, number 10 is the world of humanity is a spiritual classroom and life is the curriculum. The lessons are the experiences we have in life. The objective is to awaken to the truth of what we are here, what we are here for and return home. And then, sorry, one more is when we decided to incarnate, we got total free will to make our way back home in any way we choose. All right. So they're the, they're the first 10. And again, I'm sure you're already <laughs> feeling things and connecting to things around those. So I'm going to jump now into the last nine. And as I'm going deeper, remember, ask the question, how does this help me forgive? And then also, what is my body saying? How does this make me think? How does this make me feel? And what are my senses telling me? First one today within this part two is we have equally mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical intelligence. What this highlights is the way that we do one thing is the way that we do all. When we move through an experience that causes us pain that we need forgiveness for, 
we have to understand and remember that what isn't expressed through one way of our intelligence, either mental or emotional, spiritual, or physical, comes out in the other to get our attention. Right. So, for example, if I experience childhood trauma, and for whatever reason, I don't feel like I can express the emotion around that, the fear, the anger, the sadness, the grief, then that energy that wants to express through my intelligence at that time, the emotional intelligence, it's going to get my attention in other ways. Right? It's going to get my attention through my physical body. Right? You know, we, if you've listened to me long enough, you know that the body keeps score. Right? That emotion of anger is going to show up in my gut or my liver. That emotion of sadness is going to show up in my heart, in my chest. Right? That emotion of guilt and shame is going to show up physically in my sacral center. This is just examples. It could also show up as a thought form in your mental intelligence. Right? That emotion of anger may have some stories and some beliefs around it that are also getting your attention. So it's important to realize when you're looking to forgive, don't block anything. Allow your intelligence to tell you what is needed. Our body, our spirit, and our mind know what to do. A lot of the time we just need to get out of the way. <laughs> and remember that our natural state of being is one of balance and health, not of dis-ease, not of suffering. Right? It's of balance and health. So when we allow these four types of intelligence to move through us, then we can come back to this balance. In this instance, through forgiveness. But remember, this goes towards all health. The next law here is life is not random. Purposeful opportunities to make choices. We are given purposeful opportunities to make choices and we are guided by our higher self. Life is not random. We're given purposeful opportunities to make choices and are guided by a higher self. So this, what this dictates and what this helps us see is that <laughs> we are not just a human having a human experience. We are, as I said in the first episode, we are a spiritual being having a beautiful human experience. And this human experience is not just by itself. We have different incarnations, right? We have different lives. And each life has a certain set of experiences and things we need to move through to expand and to learn and to grow. And if we can connect to our higher self, our higher self is usually there to give us guidance. All right. It also shows us that in regards to forgiveness, that we have predetermined soul contracts, soul family, soul relationships that we have throughout each human experience that we plan, that we plan and have to really expand ourselves, to move through lessons, to release karma, to grow. What this does is now it helps us see that in the events, in the relationships that we have, it helps us remove judgment and guilt around those experiences and helps us see that, oh, this is meant to be. Right, so, for example, if you're going through a divorce and you think that life is happening to you, you think this life is you know, just minuscule, you're here and, you, and then you're done, it would be very easy to hold judgment and hold on to suffering around that event. But now if you can see that one, life is not random, and two, this is a purposeful opportunity that you can go inwards to seek higher guidance around, i.e. your higher self, then this can help you forgive. We must also understand that when we connect to our higher self, this is us connecting to our God presence or our divinity. Right? It's a part of our God presence. It is a part of the, the power of oneness, the power of God. Let's just use that word inside of you. So when you go through these events and you're looking to forgive and you're, and you're asking what is the purpose, go in and ask yourself. Not, don't ask the ego. Don't ask the pieces of you that are, are, are connected to the separation. 
Ask the piece of you that's connected to oneness and love and unity. That is where you can get your answers. That is where you can tune into what is needed. All right, let's keep it flowing. So again, just to, re- just to reiterate here, m- moving through these lessons, keep asking yourself, how, how does this connect into my life? What can I use these lessons to help me forgive? Okay, you should be feeling some things in your body at this point. If you're not, just keep leaning in. Keep leaning in with me. And if you're driving, obviously, just do the best you can. But if you're you know, multitasking, doing all the things, then this is really where this can be powerful. The next one here on the list is the ego is a part of the soul. Its job is to lovingly find all sorts of opportunities for me to experience the pain of separation, that being my purpose. So going back to the first episode, where I talked about this separation being your purpose, helping you come back to more of yourself, more of unity, more of God experiencing God or oneness experiencing God. And what we can now see that is that the ego is a part of us, right? I, in this comment, it said that, you know, Colin wrote this and, and it, from his perspective that the ego is a part of the soul. I think an image that I would use that is slightly different is the, the ego is the flip side of the coin. One side is the soul and the, and the spirit and the oneness. The other side is the ego. That is, a, a, I think, an image that works better for me. Maybe it works better for you. But what this helps us see is a few things. One, it helps us see that when we're in a situation where we're finding it hard to forgive, the ego is activated, we feel separated. We don't want to kill the ego, right? We don't want to destroy the ego. We don't want to put the ego in a corner and call it a bad boy or a bad girl, right? This is where we need to see that the ego is a part of us, right? It's the same, it's a part of that coin that is us, that spiritual being having a human experience. So we need to love it. We need to see it for its purpose. We need to see for what it's doing and then decide to move beyond it, right? And see the lesson, come back into oneness, Right, the ego is also part of our self-expression. Right, the ego helps us be separate. Right, it helps us have that. <laughs> it helps us have that identity. It helps me be Harrison. It helps you be you. Right. The question is, what are we channeling through the ego? Like I just talked about before, when I connect to my higher self or my God source, do I then decide to channel that through my ego? So, in a situation where I'm looking to forgive. Right? Am I channeling more of my shadows, more of my pain, which pushes me more into separation? Or am I channeling through me, through the ego, more love, more unity, and more coming back together? This is what you need to ask yourself. Right? So it's okay to experience the pain. That's why we're here, as, this, as these episodes are highlighting. But it's not okay to stay in the pain. Right? It's not okay to say suffering in it. This is where you make a choice. Right? That is what these laws help you do. That is what these episodes are hopefully are h- highlighting for you, is you see the pain and then you move through it with different choices. Right? You learn the lesson. You see that the pain has a pl- part to play, right? That like the opportunities I was just speaking about. You see that this forgiveness you're looking to lean into in this relationship, in this situation, and you channel through your ego, what is needed to move from separation back into wholeness, back into love, because this is your purpose. Experience the pain of separation, see the lesson, understand, let go, forgive, come back into one, come back into love, repeat. (laughs) There's your your life, life experience right there. So that is why it's so important really to not, you know, because I know it's very, and I see this in myself, you know, I'm, I can fall into this trap within the spiritual community. We don't want to, we don't want to destroy the ego. We don't want to, we, we don't want to spiritually bypass, right? We want to get to the divinity, get to the oneness, but then come back through the ego to do the work. We need this balance. Right, that's why going back to the first law I talked about, it's important to have spiritual intelligence, but also mental, emotional, and physical. Right? Because that's that is truly a holistic conversation. If we're just having a spiritual intelligence, i.e., going into meditation, 
getting to the spiritual heights and then staying there, not taking any of those lessons through the mental body where the limiting beliefs lie or the emotional body where we're holding on to suppressed emotion around events that we're having trouble forgive, forgiving around, then we're not going to heal. We're not going to take a step forward. We're not going to learn. So you need this holistic approach. All right, next one here is cause and effect we use in this life to create our reality. Thoughts are causes that show up as physical effects. Our world is a mirror. <laughs> so a big one here. But again, a similar theme that you're probably noticing. This similar theme of there is a bigger picture at play. The first element that I add to this is this idea of where our attention goes, energy flows. So our outside world is really not objective. It is subjective based off our inside world, right? Based off our mental reality, based off our emotional reality, based off our spiritual reality. Right, and then the physical form, right, and this is, the, this is probably the powerful part of this, the physical form shows us the representation of our internal mental, emotional, and spiritual world. Right, the physical, you know, you see this through, you know, dis-ease, right, the body keeping score. Right, this is why it's so important that we must learn to weed the garden, especially of our mental world. Right, due to a lot of the, the elements that we're looking to forgive, some of us are holding on to stories around that forgiveness, around that trauma. Right. And those stories, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve to speak, I don't have value, I'm full of fear, I'm, you know, all these things. I'm not good enough. Right. I think I said that, but <laughs> you get the idea. These stories, if we're holding on to them where our attention goes, energy flows, this then creates our outside world. It shows up as physical effects. All right, if I'm constantly, either consciously or unconsciously in my internal world, feeling that I am unworthy, feeling I'm not valuable, feeling I'm not good enough, feeling that my voice doesn't matter, then the outside physical world will show us proof of that. Not to punish us, not to tell us that we're horrible, but just because that's just the, how it works. Right, our outside world is connected to our internal reality. So the powerful part here is create a new world by changing your inner world. Reprogram those beliefs. Right, create better ones. Right, this is the analogy of the snowy mountain. Right, the picture of the snowy mountain is your internal mental scape, right? And the path, the way that you walk down the mountain is the thought pattern that you have. I'm not good enough. Let's use that one. Let's say that that thought pattern is running in the background, right? And you haven't, it's just the way it is. You haven't reprogrammed it. Every time you walk down that mountain, the snowy mountain, that path of that belief, that thought becomes deeper and deeper until the point in which you can't walk down that whole mountain without falling down that one path of the I'm not good enough or the limiting belief. What is happening now is that you fall into that belief and you think it's your world, right? Because one, you're falling into it internally, but two, it's being justified by the outside world too. You're attracting the people, places, and things to justify it. But what we tend to forget within that 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 path that's so deep you don't see the rest of your potential the rest of the snowy mountain it doesn't mean it's not there it just means you're stuck in what you do not know you do not know right the another analogy is the the frog in the well knows nothing of the ocean so this is where it's important to either start reprogramming yourself or gain support right see the coach see the therapist see the doctor to help you out of that path and building new pathways, new beliefs to see and tap into your potential. All right, going back to forgiveness, this is where we must lean into forgiveness. Right? We must let go. Stop holding on to that belief. Stop holding on to that thought pattern. 
so you can surrender into it to see the rest of the potential. And then once you lean into this internally, the outside world will show up as a mirror of how well you are doing. Right, just, just to reiterate this one more time here. If you think this is not you, I would lovingly ask you, look at your world. Right? Remember, your outside world is a proof if this is or isn't true. How are your relationships? Are you happy with them? Right? How is your business? How is your dynamic with money? How is your physical body? Right? As I said in the second, in the last point, right? look at the outside world and what it's showing you and s- reflect it inwards. Use the mirror that it is to tell you what the state is of your inside dynamic. All right. Hope that one resonates. The next one here is, the next one here is, we at the soul level get precisely what we need to grow. How we judge what we get determines if we experience life as painful or joyful. Let me read that one again. It's a big one. We at the soul level get precisely what we need to grow. How we judge what we get determines if we experience life as painful or joyful. What I would actually substitute here is instead of painful, I would say, you know, full of suffering or joyful. Because remember, pain is inevitable, but continued pain, i.e. suffering, is not. So this one, again, leads on beautifully from the last point, right, and shows you that we are the creator of our reality (laughs) based off our perception of it. Right, how we judge our ego, how we judge our programming, how we judge our beliefs, our emotions, our physical representation of them really sets the stage for what will happen next. Right, so it's empowering because it shows you that you are in control. Right, you may not have been in control of, let's say, you experienced childhood trauma and that's the element you're looking to forgive, but you are in control of the beliefs around it, the stories around it, the emotions suppressed, and the actions you take to step forward. Right, it also shows that this pain, again, like I talked about before, is precisely what we need to expand. So now we can see, and and what I'm about to say, if this triggers you, one, I'm sorry, but two, I would encourage you to lean into it. What this shows is that this trauma that we've experienced, because this is, if you're listening, maybe this is the part you're looking to forgive, was there to support you. Was there a part of your soul, soul's mission to help you expand, right? Because maybe a part of that trauma is a lesson that you need to learn from past lives, right? But how we are judging it, i.e. I'm the victim, Right, I can't forgive because this person needs to be punished. That's what's stopping you from actually healing. Right, I'm not here to say that the other person doesn't need to take account- accountability, that the other person doesn't need to see the, the actions and the karma they've created. We all do. But for you, this is about you. For you to heal, you need to take ownership. You need to see that this is here for a bigger reason that you deserve to heal. And to do that, we need to first lean into acceptance, right? We're not accepting it that it's our future, but we are accepting it for what it is so we can change it and taking our responsibility and our role in it, right? We, this moves and shifts the judgment and the perception of our reality from everything is happening to me to everything is happening for me, right? So to dive deeper into this rule and this law, we must always shift the experience that we're looking to forgive right? and asking the question, how is this happening for me? Right? Not going into that victim mindset that's so programmed in this society. Right? And I say that with love and as also someone who's often catching himself in it. Right? It's so easy to fall into that scarcity mindset right? that I am wrong, I am broken, I deserve this, all these things. You do deserve it, but you don't deserve it to be reminded of the victim that you are. You deserve it because it's a part of this soul's mission, this soul's journey to help you grow, to help you be more, 
to help you through the gifts and the experience. Right, this doesn't, again, this doesn't exclude the pain, but this excludes the suffering. Right, this excludes the suffering because you're changing your perception. Right, as, I, as I've been saying with the last two points, your perception on reality is what makes your reality. Right, so we must learn to let go and forgive so we can change it. I recommend a book here that is, has been powerful for me is uh, The Power of Letting Go by David R. Hawkins. The Power of Letting Go by David R. Hawkins. It helps us let go, helps us move beyond the victim into the healer. Right, and realizing that this is what I need. This pain, this trauma, this challenge that I'm looking to forgive, this is precisely what I needed to help me go deeper into myself. Right, I remember one of those ways that you might be looking to go deeper, there might be some gifts right behind this trauma, this pain, this experience that you're looking to, to, to let go of, to forgive. Right, some gifts from your spiritual being, from your past, right, that have been locked behind this trauma, and that's exactly why you've been given it again in this lifetime, so you could see them. All right, let's keep it going. The next one here is the next law, the next spiritual lesson to help you with forgiveness deep lasting forgiveness is through relationships we learn and grow. We heal and return to wholeness and truth and see projections and bring repressed material to the surface. Thus, we need others for healing. All right, there's a lot in this one. Let me say it again. Through relationship, we learn and grow. We heal and return to wholeness and truth and see projections and bring repressed material to the surface. We need others for healing. Right. Getting into the juicy parts here. <laughs> so this one shows us a few things. First of all, it shows us that again, this you can see a common common th common thread that the outside world is there to reflect back what is needed to be seen internally. But now we're seeing this through other people, right? Specifically through other people in, in our relationships, our friends, our family members, our lovers. Right, the example that I always give, right, if I walk into a room with my dad and, my, and I suddenly feel some anger moving through me, it would be easy for me to say that my dad is making me angry, but in reality, my dad isn't making me angry. He's reflecting through his anger, the anger that's inside of me that needs to be seen. Right, He's projecting onto me, but that projection is helping me see or that reflection is helping me see the anger inside of me that needs to be healed, needs to be released, needs to be channeled needs to be forgiven, right? So this is how other people in relationships are helping us see more of ourselves, which is why if you're on this healing journey, and right, I'm going to plug myself here non-shamelessly, if you're, if you're on this healing journey and you're hitting a wall and you decide you, and, you, and you're wondering what do I need to do, what you need to do is hire someone. Right? And I say that with so much love because what we need to understand is that we are a powerful spiritual being, but we're also a human being that has these layers. And we need reflections of someone that, especially someone that knows what they're doing from a professional perspective, to break down these projections to help us see the thing so we can heal. Right? Because what is going on here, many of us through childhood trauma, ancestral elements, we're holding on to unconscious pain. Right, unconscious beliefs, unconscious emotions. And, we, and by the, the, the definition of this world, this word, it's unconscious. So we're not consciously aware of it, but it's still dictating our reality, right? Again, it's reflecting into the outside world through our relationships, through our business, through our, through our relationship to money, through our health, right? So we need other people to bring the unconscious to the conscious awareness so we can change it, so we can let it go, so we can forgive it. This is powerful, right? Because now, again, this shifts you more out of the victim. No one is making you feel anything. They are purely reflecting. They're attracting you through the law of resonance, but then through the law of reflection, they're helping you see more of yourself. We are spiritual human beings. 
right? And that's why we work really well in tribes together. That's why if you've ever you know, spent time with me at Clubhouse, that's why you feel good in the rooms because we're all reflecting. We're not just, and, and this, I want to make this very clear. We're not just reflecting the parts that we need to heal. We're also reflecting our love and our joy and our happiness. Right. So just to be clear, going back to working with someone, the best healer, the best doctor, the best therapist, the best coach, the best practitioner is the one that understands this, that they are not ever giving you anything. They are purely reflecting back to you, either the things that need to be healed or more of yourself. So you can dive into what is needed to be seen, expressed, released, you know, moved through at right? the best healer, best coach, is in my friend, my friend and colleague, the beautiful Dr. Taggy, in her words, a smudge free mirror. Right? We have the smudges that we need to move through, but if someone holds up a smudge free mirror, we can then see the things that are beyond that which we do not know. Going back to the analogy of the of the the snowy mountain and being in the path, right now, through the mirror, through the other person, we're able to see beyond the path into the rest of the mountain. Right, we're seeing through the personas, the belief systems that are projected onto us. Right, remember, healing is not a gaining. Healing is a removing of the layers, removing of the belief systems, removing of the faces that we put on. So I hope this is resonating. Right, I hope that you're connecting this back to forgiveness. Right, how can you learn to forgive now by having a smudge-free mirror in your life? How can you learn to forgive by seeing that the person you're looking to forgive isn't making you feel anything? They're just allowing you to see more of yourself so you can forgive yourself. That is why we must see that the first step of forgiveness is not the external, it is the internal. It is your self-forgiveness. All right, a few more here. The next one is through the law of resonance, we attract others who resonate with our issues so we can heal them. We bring in someone who will abandon us, for example, so we can heal it and teach us. Say that again to the law of resonance. We attract others who resonate with our issues so we can heal them. We bring in someone, for example, who will abandon us so we can heal that element and it can teach us. So this beautifully moves on again from the last point. Right? It's talking about that, not the law of reflection, the law of resonance, but they work very well together. Right. So an example that's given, I'll just break it down a little bit more. If let me use a childhood example, let's say that I'm looking to forgive a childhood trauma where I was abandoned by my mom, by my dad, my, by my caregiver. And for whatever reason, I have not healed that wound and it's in my unconscious, right? I'm not conscious aware, consciously aware of it, but it's there still. Now what will happen through the law of resonance, I will attract a partner in my adult life or partners that keep abandoning me, right? And you're probably wondering, what am I doing wrong, right? Why is there so many horrible people in the world? <laughs> but it's not the fact that there's horrible people in the world. There's just that we all have issues. We all have pains. And what is happening, because your innate state is health, your innate state is balance, you are attracting through the unconscious wound, someone through the law of resonance with the same wound, so they can reflect back to you all of the stories, all of the emotions around that wound so you can heal it. Right? So this is so powerful. I hope that you're getting this message. See, so how we break that chain of continuing to attract partners that abandon us is we see that it's not about them. It's about us. If we heal that abandonment wound internally by maybe doing inner child work, by doing chakra work, by doing whatever the modality is, then we stop attracting people that abandon us because we've healed, we've forgiven internally. Right? And just to make a very uh, distinction here in case you're getting confused, right? the law of resonance is just a pure attraction, like attracts like. The law of reflection is if there is a trigger so if I attract someone with abandonment wound and that is a, and that is triggering me, which it probably is, that's the law of reflection on top of the law of resonance. Right. So again, we are creating our external reality by the state of our internal state. 
when we forgive, right? When we truly forgive, we truly, truly lean into this deep forgiveness. We can let go and heal that wound. So we stop attracting to so remember, go in and ask yourself, what is the lesson here? Why did this person abandon me? How did it make me feel? What stories do I have playing around this? All right, two more. I hope you're just checking in with you. I hope that you're continuing to ask the question, right? How is this helping me forgive? And also looking how your body's reacting, right? The reason I said that, and you're probably noticing it by now, is if your body's reacting, your subconscious is reacting through your tissues, then some of these elements that I've spoken about thus far will be speaking through your body, right? There might be some things from your past that are unconscious, some traumas, some wounds through listening to this, to this episode, they're coming up. And that's beautiful, right? So this, let, this episode in itself is healing. The next one here, second last one is we come into the human experience with a mission to fully experience a particular pattern so we can feel the feelings of that pattern and transform this energy through love. So that again, we come into this human experience with a mission to fully experience a particular pattern so we can feel the feelings of that pattern and transform it through the energy of love. So this goes back to one of the earlier points of, you know, having a soul path, soul contract, soul family, having certain experiences to move through, right? I would add, what I would add to this is we need to feel and understand and acknowledge that this mission that we experience and the particular patterns that we have to move through, they're connected to karma. They're connected to past lives. They're connected to the things that we haven't moved through, obviously. That's why they're coming back around. Right? So this is where ancestral healing comes in. Right? If you're looking to forgive fully, it's also worth noting, how long has this thing been here? Right? Is this mine is a question you can ask. Right? You, still, you still deserve to heal it. You'll heal it now in the present. But when we can understand the context of it, it helps us heal easier. Right? So for example, if you're learning to forgive maybe a wound around money, a limiting belief around money, around worthiness and value, it's highly likely that that belief, that thought form, that karma, that shadow around money is probably in your dad, in your mom, in your grandfather, in your grandmother. So it's seeing that this mission with these patterns is there's layers to it. And when we can see the bigger picture, then we can truly learn to forgive. We can truly learn to go deeper into it. What this law is also saying is the energy of love is the thing that helps us heal. Right? When we're forgiving, when we're letting go, when we're moving out of separation, what are we doing? We're moving back into love. Right? We're moving back into unity. We're moving back into God. We're moving back into uh, you, the, the one mind, whatever your name is for it. For me, it's love. This, this is the name of the podcast, the Cosmic Love Antenna, right? That is the energy that helps us heal, helps us forgive, is the opposite of separation, right? So keep, remind yourself of that. When you're looking to forgive, ask yourself the very powerful affirmation, what would love to? You could make that every choice. Instead of making a choice from fear and separation, make a choice from love and unity, right? Remember that if this love is making you emotional, you're on the right track. But if you are looking to forgive a trauma, for example, from childhood, and you ask what would love to, and in that question, you feel some sadness, you feel some anger, you feel some guilt, you feel some shame come up, that means you're doing it right, right? Because remember, going back to the first episode, this human experience is an emotional one. So if you feel emotion, when you're looking to forgive, you're doing it right. You're starting to let go. You're starting to release. Forgiveness brings us back to love. Forgiveness through emotion brings us back to love. All right, feel. Feel it and let it move through you. I hope that one connects because that's a, it's a big lesson in itself. The last one here today is this physical reality is an illusion created through our senses, 
Matter is just energy at different frequencies. So this one is such a beautiful way to sort of finish this universal, these teachings around forgiveness and the spiritual perspective today through this healing process. Everything is energy. Everything is spirit. Everything is God. Everything is love. There's a, a, a quote that is thrown around that I really resonate with is matter, or in this case, physical reality, but matter is spirit moving slow enough so it can be seen. Right? It's really profound. It really helps you see that nothing is static. <laughs> Everything is dynamic and moving and energy. So when we hold onto anger or resentment or unforgiveness, to especially not just a person now, but a place or a thing outside of us. What we are doing is that we're holding on to anger and separation towards what we are, which is energy, which is spirit, and which is God and love. So we must learn to see again that everything outside of us is us. <laughs> so when we go to forgive, and we go to us first, that is us forgiving the external world because the external world is us. Right? We must learn to let go and always come back to ourselves because through that, we are changing the outside world. I want to end this by sharing a story. Yeah. Last year, maybe if people have heard a couple of these episodes, you've heard me share this story. But last year, I lost my home. And in flash flooding, and it was quite a traumatic experience. A lot of emotion, a lot of things moving through me. And it was, I had a lot of lessons, a lot of things to move through, a lot of things to, that I was holding on to unforgiveness around that I needed to forgive. And at the time, there was a lot of, I was holding on to a lot of unforgiveness to the home itself, right? You know, how could it do this to me? How could it betray me? How could, you know, it, it, I, I connected my feelings of, support safety and security to the that home and now that was it was taken away from me very quickly and i was finding it very hard to forgive because i couldn't see why it was happening but then once i sort of shifted this perspective and went inwards and reminded myself that my sense of safety security and support is an internal game right i decide where i'm when i'm safe when i'm secure when i'm supported and then that is reflected to my outside world. The outside world changed. Right? I was able to find a home, was able to find a new space that I live in now. And you know, for many reasons that I won't go into, it's a much better situation. But it happened because I went inside and saw that everything happening externally was just a beautiful mirror to help me see what I needed to see and feel, most importantly, internally. So I hope. These lessons today and these experiences not just have helped you forgive, right? That's like, that was like the, uh, the secret sort of only first layer to this episode. But you can see how these lessons and these spiritual understandings can help you see the real reality that you are the most powerful creator and being that exists in your reality. And, and the sooner that you can remember that, not only will you begin to heal, not only will you begin to forgive, but you'll start to create the world that you deserve to see, that we all deserve to see, but let me just speak to you that you deserve to see. So this is why self-love, self-care, it's not just a, you know, a loving, compassionate, fluffy thing to do. It is really the answer to changing the world. <laughs> I know that's a, maybe a little bit hyperbolic, but I don't, I don't think it is because remember, we are all expressions of that one source. So when we begin with us, we are beginning with everyone. So beautiful being, I hope that you got some value out of this chat today. As always, don't just listen. Don't just feel, don't just acknowledge what I'm saying. I want you to try all this out and tell me how it goes. 
message me on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, email me, whatever you feel comfortable, because I want to know how these episodes, how these lessons impact you. If you have any further thoughts, questions, or comments, you can leave them in reviews. You can send me messages as well. Always love to hear your feedback. This is a, a group conversation that we share here together. So I would love to hear the tribe's thoughts and feelings. All right, And remember to use this towards your healing today. Share this episode out with someone that you love very much if you feel it can help them to see the deeper reality of reality, the deeper layers of life. If you need help with this kind of understanding and this has hit a space today and you realize you need that smudge-free mirror in your life, then reach out. I'd love to support you, coach you, walk you back home to this truth. But with that, beautiful beings, thank you for listening. Thank you for feeling. Thank you for acknowledging more of yourself. I love you very much. I wish you a wonderful evening, morning, and night, wherever you are in the world. And until next time here on the Cosmic Love Antenna, I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison, M-E-A-G-H-E-R.